DC value for half wave rectifier. How do we calculate that? Let's assume now we have a source, the input. It's a sine wave that has a peak value here or maximum value, whatever you want to call it. And it goes down to a negative V peak or a negative V max. Going through an ideal diode. And what does that mean, ideal? We need this end to be just a hair more than zero for current to flow in that direction. Attached to a load resistor, we're looking for V out. So that's the voltage across the load here, V out. If you remember from last video, the V out here will look something like this. The reason it's called half wave rectifier. Once this is actually positive, this diode is on and it's going to react like a short circuit, which means V out is going to be the same as Vn. It's going to look like this and repeats itself every 2 pi. There's a 2 pi right here. There's pi here. And this will be a peak value. The question now, what DC value? What is What average value will give me the same result as this one? What does that mean, the same result? If you have a function that looks like this, let's talk about uh, average value. If this is, um, I'll exaggerate in the picture here, and I want to find the area from here to here. This is the area I'm looking for. And if I'm looking for the DC value, what I'm actually asking you to find is what height, what height I can use there. So if I multiply it, this length by this height will give me the same area. Notice, I'm actually, if I use this height, I'm gaining all of this area. But I'm hoping, actually, this will be actually compensate for what I lost right here, also what I lost right here because I lost all of this. I'm not counting that in my area, and I'm not counting that little peak there. So when you add this to this, hopefully we'll fill that piece. So that's really what I'm looking for. What height, what value I can use here that if I take this area now, will give me the same as the previous area, the same answer. So how do we find that mathematically? So let's see. V average is defined as, or V average or VDC, is one over the period. T is the period, capital T here. The integral over a full period of the function that you have there. So if this is, for example, my V out here, So the function with respect to t. Now how do you take the integral of that? I don't know if some of you have calculus or not, but if not, there's a lesson calculus there, quickly. So my period here, how long it takes, when you look at this, it's actually 2 pi. It repeats itself every 2 pi, so that will be 1 over 2 pi. The integral from where? From 0 to 2 pi. But if you notice, from pi to 2 pi, this function has a value of 0. So I'm not going to use that. I'm only going to go from 0 to pi. And this function will be v peak, whatever the peak value, times the sine of t, dt. I can pull the v peak outside the integral. And that will be the integral from 0 to pi of sine of t. Again, if you don't have calculus, not a big deal. We need to know what the integral of sine. And if you took calculus, you know the answer to this is negative cosine of t. From 0 to pi. And when you get your answer, 
you need to multiply it by that constant in the front. And the way we find the value of this, we plug in pi for that. Cosine of pi is negative 1, but because there's a minus sign here, it's going to make it a 1. Minus, when this is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. With the negative, that's a negative 1. We'll make that a plus 1. That's a 2. That becomes 2vp over 2pi, which means what? vp over pi. And that's why when you look in all these circuits book or electronics book, they go vdc equals the peak value divided by pi. One thing to be aware of it, this is the peak value. In some cases, sometimes you look at a problem, they give you the RMS value. RMS, root mean square. So how do you convert the RMS value to a peak value then to a DC value? So here's the VRMS, which is called V effective. And the definition for that, or the way we calculate that, 1 over the period, the integral over a full period of the velocity, I mean the velocity, the voltage squared. So let's calculate the RMS value for a sine wave. There's my sine wave. has a peak value called Vmax, or peak, whatever you want to call it. So the period for that is 2 pi. So Vrms will be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, of Vmax squared sine squared t dt. And I can take the Vmax outside the integral. Vmax squared. And you can't really integrate sine squared. But there's a trig identity that says sine squared theta equals one-half minus cosine two theta. So if we use that identity, this problem becomes Vmax squared over two pi. That's two here. The integral from zero to two pi of one-half minus cosine two t dt. I can break this one down into two separate integrals. This will be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 half dt minus the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine 2 t dt. When you integrate a cosine function or a sine function over a full period, the answer is zero. Why? Because the integral means give me the area. And for a cosine function, a sine function, when you look at the area, this is a positive area. That's a negative area. They add up to a zero. That's why the integral of sine cosine over a full period is zero. So what's the integral of this? That would be 1 half t. one half t and t is going from zero to two pi so if you plug in that'll be two pi times one half that's a pi minus zero just a pi that's 
v squared max over 2 pi and the answer to this only pi and what do you know these guys cancel each other out and you have the v maximum value squared over 2 which you can write that v max over the square root of 2 and that's your RMS value so if you want to convert from RMS for example if we say we have a 10 volt RMS value and they're asking you what is the average V average VDC what is that going to be well the first step is to convert that from RMS to a peak value or a maximum values in that equation V max over 2 over the square root of 2 not 2 equals the V RMS which is 10 so if you multiply that means V max equals 10 the square root of 2 which is roughly 14.1 volt peak and the VDC now which is the average value is VP or peak value divided by pi so it's 14.1 divided by 3.14 and if we have a calculator here we can do that and that's equal 4.49 roughly 4.5 4.5 volts DC so that's the one thing you really want to pay attention to I've seen it m more than once instead of giving you the peak value they give you the RMS so know that for a sine cosine function the V RMS is equal to the V max divided by the square root of 2 or the VP peak value divided by the square root of 2 once you know that you go back to what we did early to today in that video and where is that uh, page I have here and we said VDC is the peak value divided by pi you put the two together and you will have your DC value Next video, we're going to talk about transformers and full wave rectifiers.